Hey guys, D Mike here. Ready for another episode? Last time we helped Richard collect his five golden leaves, and he gave us access to his pothole field where we were able to collect ourselves a nice slimy key. That opens the third dungeon. So let's go ahead and get started. This is kind of where the game starts to pick it up a little bit, where uh, they test kind of what you know. And if you've been kind of putting together your skills from the first two dungeons, I wouldn't say that the kid gloves are off yet, but things are getting a little dicey. Um, as you'll notice, one of the first enemies that comes after you in this dungeon are those bob bombs When struck, they will flail around the room and combust. It's kind of frustrating, but getting out of the way of those is a little tough. You might want to take in damage. You'll notice to the left, we have some weird looking gems. Those are obstacles that we'll be able to take care of once we get an item in this dungeon. Those will be present in the overworld as well, so the game is kind of giving you a bit of a tutorial here on how to deal with those. Once again, some raised platforms. We can't do anything yet. Gonna have to find a crystal switch to hit. Yeah, this is this is one of those dungeons that I remember having a little trouble with as a kid. I said that last time too, so maybe I'm just claiming to be really inept at, uh, <laughs> at Link's Awakening. Maybe I'm just really bad at this game. I'm gonna say that every time. Hey, so there was this dungeon that I was really bad at. Uh, one through eight, pretty tough, not doing great. It's funny, like I was saying, what I used to do when I would record before, and it was still live commentary back then too, I would practice for hours before I would make an episode. And I would essentially get the dungeons down to a science. It almost didn't feel fun to watch for me just because of how, like, I was a little too good. And that's not a flex. That's just me being a tryhard. So these weird parrot things, I think they're parrots. Uh, maybe not, I don't know. They're kind of scary looking. They are able to teleport around the room. So they're kind of tough to kill. So a way that you can do that, not like that. A way that you can do it. Oh, come on. Uh, all right, let's try that again. Maybe? No, not good. We're doing great, folks. We're doing great. That should do it. All right. Oh, you need two of them. Greedy. So the way that you can do it is with long distance items or bombs. Gonna wanna grab everything. All right, so maybe not. All right, cool. So we got two keys. This. Level is called the Key Cavern. There's going to be quite a few of them. Shocking, I know. But that's kind of the, the gimmick of this one. Ow, excuse you. That's rude. Same kind of deals before. Take your bomb. This is not me intentionally trying to mess up. This The game is being brutal today. One of the things that also kind of frustrates me about the mechanics of this game is that you can only use one bomb at a time which does make things a little frustrating when you're trying to... I'm getting to the very, to the very like cynical side of me going, all right, are we doing this today? That's how it feels. Okay, there we go. Double kill. That worked pretty well. Grab the key before it flushes itself down the toilet and we can progress. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick little public service announcement. I did want the end of one of the videos before, but I feel like it might be tough to get as much traction with that since I don't know if people watch these all the way through. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody who's been watching and subscribing so far. It's been great. 
if you get the chance when you watch this video, throw a like on it if you're able to. If you did like what you see, obviously. And if you're not subscribed and you're watching this video, please do that as well. Helps the channel grow and helps me to see what works and what doesn't to produce content for everybody. And comment, that's kind of a big thing too. One of the kind of toughest parts of channel building that I've experienced in the past is kind of getting the the community involvement. I know that it's not something that everybody wants to do. Some people just want to watch and kind of follow along and that's fine. But I love getting to hear back from everybody and to engage with all of you. So here's a question for you. For those watching, feel free to toss this down in the comments when you're when you're ready. What stuff are you guys playing? What games are kind of wetting your whistle right now and and you're spending time with? I know I've been able to reconnect with some of my former Let's Play friends, which has been cool, and seeing what they're up to. So for those of you who are maybe content creators or just people having fun on your own, what games are you guys playing? What what stuff is has gotten gotten you going? Are you streaming? Are you making episodes for the YouTubes? All kinds of possibilities nowadays, which is really cool, really fun. I love getting to see people using multiple platforms to engage and make some cool stuff. So we need a few more keys. As you can see, there's at least two there and one right there. So this dungeon does live up to its name of being the, the key cavern. You can blow up that wall. I don't know how you would have been able to figure that out though. This is kind of a tricky puzzle. The game doesn't, it's not really cut and dry where they wanted you to put that bomb. So if you guys can figure that out without my help, then you're doing great. You're doing better than I did. So this is a slight variant of the, of the bob bombs from the intro. The ones from the intro part of the stage, the, the lobby, the foyer for those of you who are a little more uh, fancy than I am, will bounce around wildly. These ones are on a timer. They'll come after you with a countdown, and then they obviously explode. Shocking. So we've got the compass. That's nice. Go ahead and pop into our map really quick. So there's quite a few chests in this one, some that we'll have to come back and get that you're not really able to get from the get-go. So we'll work on that. I don't have any more bombs, so I can't progress the way that I thought that I was going to. That was my mistake. So I'll have to get bombs somewhere else. Thank you, game. It's wonderful. There is a chest up here that we can't get. There is a two-hole gap that we're not able to manage yet. That's something that maybe an item could help us take care of. Because right now, with the Rock's Feather in our current setup, the best we can do is jumping one square at a time. Getting real sick and tired of you guys. I don't know if there's really a good way to do this. Yeah, I don't know if there's a real... if there's a way that you can get close enough without bombs, because they teleport a little bit too fast. It would be nice if there was a, a long-range weapon that we had, but we don't have that, so. This episode is all about making do with what we've got. Sometimes you can do a lot with a little. So the game throws us a bone or a bomb. And this is the explodey flail around variety. Friendly fire is nice. Getting itself caught on the level geometry is nice. So a chest did pop up down here. That's helpful. Get ourselves some cold hard cache. All right. So we're going to pop back down here now. We've got the bombs that... We're needed, yeah, thanks. 
Sometimes when I get the compass and I know that there's going to be something in there from, you know, the experiences I've had and the game is, you know, giving me the ding-dongs, it feels like it's taunting me a little bit and I don't like that. So, excuse you, game. It's pretty clear that there's obviously something in this room or else they wouldn't put that super cool little pedestal there. It is unfortunate, though, that you have to kind of take a steady approach to this one. All right, two keys. A piece of power that I didn't ask for. The game is generous in the weirdest ways. We can go up here and face our the very scrotal mini boss of this level. These are the Dodongos. Now, for those of you who have played Ocarina of Time, who have played Oracle of Seasons, you'll see these guys realize that our our mini boss here, our very testicular mini boss, is not related to those guys at all. I mean, in name alone. So we've got got a fairy out of that. That's weird. We had just the right amount of bombs. You need three apiece. You get your halfway warp point. Compliments of the Balls Brothers. And so you can kind of see what, we've, what we're working with here. This is where we finally get one of the funnest items in the game. A speedrunner's wet dream. The Pegasus Boots. So now, once again, this is another item that's been locked to a button. In this case, it's L now. So that's pretty neat. Oops. Excuse you. It <laughs> I'm not doing that poorly that the game has to coddle me this much. Now, with that item, what we can do is have a little more success trying to take care of the teleporting guys. They won't be able to get out of the way fast enough. But there's actually, if you remember, this is not where I meant to go. In the, on their way up to, no, <laughs> I'm getting lost. On the way into this area, there were those crystals that I mentioned that you can, power through. Now we can't do it right this second just because of the way that the crystals are set up here, but you can get yourself the owl's beak. That's not, that's a nothing burger if you're already on your way, but feel free to grab it if that's what you need. Get yourself some hints, a nice Nintendo power hotline, but there's this very suspicious area here. I wonder what could be in that spot. For those of you observant and adept players at the Zelda series, I'm sure you can all figure it out. So that's the proper way to do that. Not like that, but use the more aggressive bob -omb gentlemen's to friendly fire your way through this. So there you go. That'll net you another chest. And that's how you dispatch those green crystal, excuse you, crystals. Killing that little gel will result in you popping up that hidden chest. And this is very good. You get 300 rupees out of this one. There's a very expensive item that we're going to want to try to get our hands on. So now that the crystals are down, we can walk our way around here for the shielded Stalfos. Put him out of his misery. Get ourselves the map. Let's take a look at the map. As you might have guessed, key. Pretty great. The key item, the map, shows us a picture of the dungeon, which is a key. Coincidence? Curious? But you did see that there was 
a room right inside the lobby to the right. Now this is, you might come here as soon as you get the Pegasus boots, I didn't do that. But you can't pull this off without the Pegasus boots, this weird swirly thing will push you back. That's a quick way to get the third key that you need. And then when you're done, just teleport your way back. So we're still missing the boss key. That's the one thing we're in need of still. Um, guys. Now's not the time. A man's working okay. So with the Pegasus boots, you can charge at the teleporting puffins. I don't know what those are. They're terrifying, that's for sure. Don't you do it, game. But we need to get ourselves some bombs. All right. It's getting a little out of hand. I'm not great at this game, but I'm not that bad. But let's pop into one of these owl statues for a second. <laughs> That's kind of bad if you remember what I was calling them earlier. A little inappropriate game. Okay, this is a game for children. So there is a bombable wall there, but you can't see it from the right side. That's why moving across this pathway to the left gives you kind of a heads up on what you're supposed to do. Thank you, game. Once again, another required room. The one thing that we're missing that we need to finish this bad boy up is over there. So let's skidoo. One of the things that I really enjoy that they did about in the remake here is just the little pitter-patter of Link's feet. So, we'll do that. Just gonna sneak right past you. It's a little bit of the Midwest coming out. Okay. So if you go ahead and poke the wall, it has a little bit of a hollow sound to it. It's not really where I placed that bomb, but it'll do, right? And they took care of themselves. That's very convenient. Fourth key. Come on, bud. There we go. There's a fairy if you need it. I don't know if all of these drops of pieces of power and acorns and fairies, if this was in the original or if the game is just, you know, pandering to me a little bit because it thinks I'm incapable. So, we got a couple more Stalfos to deal with. The Spear of Variety. This room is very frustrating. Not because it's hard to do, but just because I'm bad at it. But, uh, first try. Gotta do it again, though. The boss key. The jumping mechanics, I mentioned this in the first episode, or the second, whenever we did the tail cave, are a little wonky. They're not quite as straightforward as they were in the original versions of this game. It just doesn't feel quite as fluid, which makes it a little tough if you're hopping around and you're trying to jump across some tough gaps. See if we can get some bombs out of here. Those would be good. There we go. That should probably be enough. We've got the four requisite keys. Excuse me. All right. Four keys. Almost full on bombs. Actually, we don't need the bombs to for the final boss anyway, so I guess that was kind of pointless, but... The guy just loves bombs, all right? Leave me alone. So you can dash into that th that weird uh, hemorrhoidal thwomp. This jump requires use of the Pegasus boots in the jump collectively. Another example of were you paying attention? So you've got the crystals and the puffins all in one spot. Some dash attacks can take care of those. Some very dangerous keys before the final boss. Wouldn't want to have to deal with this. 
but I do want that ruby. Okay, so we've got a nice even 410. Let's go ahead and move along. Who's our final boss? Oh, it's Nyan Nyan Cat. Okay, cool. So, huh. Oh, there's gels. That's weird. That's not our final boss, is it? Wonder what would happen if we... What happens if we run into something? <laughs> oh, look at that. Slime eye, huh? Okay. He looks pretty slimy. What you're gonna want to do. Slime eyes, weakness is his eye. Obviously, crazy, I know. You're gonna want to slash at one of the eyes until you can get it just basically about apart. And you're gonna want to run through and break up this this little party, all right? Get up, Link. So they will hop around. When they are down against the wall like that, you're not gonna be able to hit them. You have to actually come into contact with the eyes. So moving around is paramount. Once they come down from the ceiling, try to time your jump when they come down. This is actually probably, I think this might be, barring one of the last dungeons, this might be, this might be the easiest. Of the dungeon bosses, I don't know, I could be over exaggerating, but that's just my opinion. Grab your heart container. Showed the key cavern who's boss. Let's pick up our instrument of choice. We're going swimming, everybody. All right. There's actually quite a bit that we're going to wind up doing prior to Dungeon 4. The game opens up quite a bit. All right. What do you got for me today, middle management? That's a little cryptic. But there's a lot to do between now and the fourth dungeon. So we're gonna make some more progress. The next episode's probably gonna be all about making sure that we can get to that fourth dungeon. There's a lot of things you gotta do to own lots of stuff and some things, lots of fun. But anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for sticking around and getting slimy with me. I'll see you next time. Peace.